talk about that a lot, but it's he think it's a good accomplishment, I think. So. Have you passed him by on the ice? Is he on the ice with you anytime? Uh, it's been a while. He's kind of <laughs> he doesn't really skate that much yeah. anymore. La- I, the last time I recall was when he would coach with the Little Caps. He was the assistant coach okay. on that team. So that's the last time we really were on the ice together. But I don't know. I kind of want to get him back out there. Yeah, it would be great for the area to get him out. You know, he's a great yeah. resource. Yeah. yeah. Now, building on the family side of it, between all of – your brother, your mom and dad, who'd you say is the best athlete? Uh, your brother's an 05 playing hockey. Where's he playing right now? He's at the Junior Flyers. Junior Flyers, okay. So, so. But they're 05 team. But I, my old family, again, is, they're a really athletic family. Like, if you look at my dad, he's a beast. My mom's a beast. Blake's, <laughs> he, Blake's getting there, but <laughs> I. I don't know. I don't know if I could say me. It, I think it has to be my mom or dad. But honestly, who'd you give the edge to? I think I'd have to give the edge to my dad. Oh, honestly, because okay. my dad, he's played. I think he's dominated more sports than my mom's has. Because my, my dad, he's, he was a beast in pretty much every sport he's played. But it was that was that's a tough one though. I don't want to. <laughs> For those of you listening, mom's outside in the car, so he's taking this opportunity uh, yeah. <laughs> to talk about that. But. Your brother but, doesn't factor in yet? No. <laughs> you ever play with him? You ever get a chance to play with him? Of course. All, we, we play together all the time, whether it's stick and pucks or just little camps. I'm on the ice with him a fair amount. So I, I show him stuff, too. He, he's always asking me about little stuff, too, which I like to see from that from him, too. But What's the scouting report? Um, Blake, he's, I think he has the ability to be an, an awesome player one day. He's two-way centerman. He's... I think he's kind of the forward version of me, I kind of want to say. He's a good skater, good hands, rank vision, all that good stuff to be a good hockey player. I think he has the tools, but he's, I think he's got to get a little stronger, though. He's, yeah. he's got to get, I don't know. Nothing against you, Blake, if you're listening. But. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, we talked a little bit about your first time, your first experience playing hockey at Bowie. Right. Um, we've been talking a lot um, through Twitter and Internet and social media about the Bowie rink kind of being in jeopardy right now but that's where i grew up playing mm. i think we've all been there it's a centrally located really good ice it's been there forever oh yeah um so those of you listening please get out there and support the rink um try to help uh facilitate the new the new rink or at least keep the old one get it improved and keep it up and running but tell me a little bit about that first experience of Bowie. with uh, i think you said your brother actually was out there with you <laughs> yeah even though he's much younger yeah so yeah Bowie was my first real hockey season playing full ice out with a team and a job and it was it was awesome that's when I really that's when I really saw to like hey I think I could do better with where I'm going like Bowie Bowie's Bowie got me playing hockey that's where I started to love the game but um I still go there every now and then catch up with everybody skate but playing out of rank that was that was really the only season that I played out of rank that was five minutes from my house yeah yeah and it was when i look back at it, it's just like wow because it was it was incredible just playing on that how did how did blake that. handle himself with the older kids did he do okay uh blake got uh, blake was just out there he didn't really care he just <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know he was he wasn't worried about a thing playing with us but i don't think anybody was yeah i think i think everybody knew he was kind of underage but he still handled himself but he was still working on the offside <laughs> and all that stuff but it was fun stuff because that was the only I could say me and Blake did play together at one point. That's but, so right. We, yeah, but um, yeah. You're moving around from from team to team. Um, I imagine that's just uh, an indication of your drive to play at better levels. Yeah. What what drove you, and what, when did you realize that you want this is what you wanted to do, and you wanted to just keep getting better and playing at a higher level? Right. I mean. I really think it, it hit me when I moved from Team Maryland to ISS Kings. I was exposed to just a new level of hockey, and I we were an international team playing all over the country, and and the development I got there was incredible. I really just found out the game of hockey, playing with good players, going over new, just little stuff off the ice as well, and playing with that group of guys really just I think that really got to me and I I wanted to keep doing that too and uh, I don't know playing on a team like that and against the top players in the country was awesome and we ended up being one of the right. 
if not the best team in the country, and it was awesome just playing that atmosphere. Yeah. And I think it that's a big reason I'm where I'm at today in my playing style. But I di- I did play four that t- for ISS too. Oh yeah. So yeah, I was actually four. Just throwing you out there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> the last year and a half. So what? Eighteen months ago, you're you're at the math of your team, Maryland. Um, it's just been a whirlwind for you to Cushing to OHL to London Knights development camp. And then you sign a contract all in the last 18 months, kind of you committed to Providence yeah. to NCAA division one during that time period too. just kind of walk us through that whole process from, you know, one day you're here in Maryland playing hockey and the next day you're committed. And now you're looking at going to play in the best league in North America. Right. Well, uh, that commitment came right after Team Maryland season from National Development Camp in Buffalo, and I had an awesome weekend. I made the All Star game. It was it was incredible. And then there were a couple of schools that were reaching out, so I, I visited a couple. But then I, Providence was one of the ones that really stood out to me. And and honestly, we did go over with my family, my advisor, that my top goal at that point was to get lock up college, get mm-hmm. a scholarship to play D one hockey. So. I made the choice to come into Providence. That was incredible. The opportunity they gave me, I still thank them for that. I, that was incredible. But then, yeah, so for the next year, I was still coming into Providence. And uh, then after this season, I kind of I kind of expanded my views on hockey, really, just like the past between where players go. So one of the London scouts uh, he's actually been in contact with me for a while now it was always the OHL was a, was always kind of an option but it was in the back of my mind so after the season ended he uh, I got inv- I got invited out to uh, one of their development camps so I went up there about a seven hour drive from Cushing <laughs> so yeah up in London at, London at the arena and uh, I had an awesome weekend I really played and they saw tremendous potential in me, and they offered me a full contract with everything. But uh, at first, it was really when you're, especially when you're an American, and you hear like stuff about the OHL, you don't really kind of see it, see it as the best path because many reasons, including college and stuff like that. But we, uh, me and my advisor, my family, we had long talks about the whole process and everything. And for me, just for me, like, every player has a different path, and that's completely fine. And not every player understands, like, the OHL path as well. But for me, after going over everything with the coaches, the scouts, and my family, my advisor, I I wanted, I believe this was my best opportunity to get to where I want to be. But, of course, it's different for everybody. But sure. for me, like, it's still fun hockey, even playing with them and those caliber players it was awesome fun hockey it's yeah, we, we talk about the same thing with all the kids here right coach like you know not every situation you know it's easy to say oh yeah go play for this triple a team or go play for this junior team but it's really got to be you know what you're comfortable with you've got to yeah. get playing time you've got to be in a situation where you're going to get exposed and show all the things that you can do to the scouts you know every every path is different and that's no different from when you're a squirt or peewee figuring out if it's time to play triple a and leave your A or double A team, it's no different now. It's just yeah. uh, the stakes get a little higher as you get older and, and at the level you're going to gonna be at. Um, yeah, I would say the, the question that I would kind of turn to Bryce is your next couple months, couple weeks even, right. you're preparing for the next step. What do you have in store? Is, is it stuff that you're going to be doing off the ice, on the ice? Are you going to be getting a chance to relax, go on vacation, things like that? Uh, for me, it's no vacation this summer, <laughs> so it's nothing bad. Of course, I don't, I necessarily don't want or need a vacation, as I, I do need to focus on getting better every day. To, because next season will be a jump, but I need to be ready for that. I, I will be as well. But for me, it's gonna be more focusing off ice. All the stuff I said was stretching. I'll play in the role and just getting stronger too, all around. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, I'll still be skating. I'm in a couple of tournaments this, this summer, and then I have development camp, the USA Hockey Development Camp, and uh, Buffalo at the end of, the end of uh, June, actually. Nice. So Looking I'll be up there in like two weeks. But um, 
other than that, I'm just trying to get stronger and just nice. improve my game in any ways. So, what was the biggest difference when you went to the London camp? You know, what were you? What were your expectations? And then how did it? You said you had a great weekend, great. but you know, what what was different about the level or the the guys you were playing against? And how did you? How nervous were you going into it? Uh, going into it, I really wasn't. I don't really get nervous anymore. I, I'm pretty confident in my game these days, but. From, for every level I've played in and each level that I go up in, it's always about players being bigger, stronger, and faster, and smarter, too. Smarter. Like, for me, going up to London, playing in that atmosphere, it was competitive, strong, and smart. It was smart hockey. Right. Every player knew their job, and it was smart. And you could see how that played in the games that, that weekend as well. But... Um, it's just little, the little, little stuff, too, honestly. It's just the little things that not everybody sees in the game. Mm-hmm. That's, I, I would say is different in that playing style. So The the Hunters. So Dale Hunter's coach, correct? Correct. Mark Hunter is the general manager. Correct. Um, both with ties. Uh, the family has ties to D.C. <laughs> Dale Hunter's a numbers retired here. I grew up watching him play. He's probably, you probably didn't get to yeah. see much of him. But, um, you know, just going up there and knowing that background and their connection to the DMV and, you know, just one of the most storied junior programs in North America, meeting them, that whole, you know, did, when did you get to talk to those guys and what did they tell you about your game and how did you feel just being part of that? Right, so after I talked to them after the, the camp ended, they had review, review sessions going on with everybody behind their office. So I went back there and I greeted. It was the whole coaching staff mm-hmm. and uh, – yeah, they told me they had they kind of had me in there first because they knew I had a long drive back. Mm-hmm. But uh, they told me what they had on the table, and they were being firm about it. Like they they told me they don't hand out these type of contracts often, and they they kind of showed they wanted me. But then at first, again, I had that hesitation, sure. of course. So I still had to I still talked to them about everything and the whole process. But they told me I'm a all around defenseman and big size. Quick passes, rank vision, all the stuff that I usually hear, but it's. They said I have the ability to be a top player in the OHL and beyond, so. And then I showed that too that weekend, too, but. Uh, yeah. I don't know. They just. How does it make you feel when you, you know, like uh, one of the top organizations in junior hockey anywhere yeah. to hear that from guys who played at, you know, yeah. the level you want to get to? It's. For me, I don't really get excited about it. I just get, I feel, I feel good hearing that. But to me, I don't, I'm, I don't think I'm the shit for it or anything. Like I still, I'm like, I'm like thank you. I see it as a thank you moment. So sure. I thank them for telling me that. But I still want to get better and use that as that's that to me is kind of confidence in my game. That's more confidence. But yeah, it's awesome, especially hearing it from guys like the Hunters. It's incredible. So, but then again, I gotta still. Play put that into my game and just keep playing and getting better so coach we talked about commitment maybe commitment versus commitment like we always say maybe uh anything for Bryce with that how many hours a week do you think you spend preparing for the on ice side of things oh that's stretching itself plays at least couple hours throughout the week but then other, it's just simple nutrition stuff taking my vitamins in the morning protein shakes after workouts and how many uh, times do you work out for Monday me, through Friday four to five times a week and it depends on the time I'm skating as well so if I'm skating a lot a certain week I might not work out as much dial it and, back a bit and if I do I'll do like light stuff maintenance workouts just to keep me in and shape I guess yeah. but uh, for me Another just tip for me, it's just warming up before, like, whether that be, like, just a little jog, just something to warm up your muscles. Like, I feel like that's crucial because I, I actually used to get injured because I wouldn't warm up before, like, games and practices, and I had, I had like, strained hip flexors, sore mu- just super sore muscles, stuff like that. But um, I learned from my trainer just to warm up properly before I just do activities. So even before this, these games, like, did a little warm up, so. Yeah. So even though he skated with a couple beer leaguers, he still takes the time to warm up, and you could see it out there. He was zipping around, making plays, putting pucks on net, and had, had a ton of fun playing back-to-back games in the SEHL. <laughs> yeah.